uh, for those of, uh, uh, of the network that can't be here today. Um, the last thing we've added here is this is your employers network. Um, we have got a, a series of things that we want to share with you around masterclasses and quarterlies, but we really, really would like to hear um, from you. Um, if, you, if there's anything that you think we should be doing on these sessions. Um, we might even um, send, send a little prompt out to everybody following um, this session. So I'm just, <laughs> I'm just looking in our chat, um, funny Zoom stories. Um, Mel, Mel was singing, making a cup of tea. Um, I like it. Um, oh, uh, uh, underwear on someone's radiator. That, that's a classic. Um, we we might have done a session where someone in in the little box at the top was having a good pick of their nose um forgetting that the camera was on yeah not 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 pleasant um anyway our focus today back to reality is um the Careers and enterprise company um education report that has literally just landed hot off hot off the press um and we're gonna have a chat around employer standards as i say we're a small but perfectly um formed group today it is national careers week we've got a lot of our employers out doing exciting career stuff in in schools um it's um national science week next week it's international women's day it's all the things um in march so I, i'm presuming um everybody's out there busy doing lots of inspirational stuff um as i say we're going to focus on the employer sta employer standards in the in the second half of this session and um, but i just kind of wanted to put into context um why why we're talking about employer standards employer standards are, are brand new um but the kinds of they've kind of come off the back of what schools have been doing for years now. Um, I'm sure, um, and we, we've, we've talked about Gatsby benchmarks a lot, um, but I just kind of wanted to remind you um, that schools actually measure themselves against these eight Gatsby benchmarks. Um, they fill in a compass evaluation every quarter um, and they rank themselves on these benchmarks. Why I'm saying this is, is the employee standards are really the, um, the other side of the coin really um, towards what schools are doing. So what schools are doing with their careers programme, so they are you know, looking at whether they've got a stable careers programme, learning from career and labour market information and all the other things. We, we concentrate a lot on these sessions on encounters with employers, Gatsby 5 and Gatsby 6, experience of the workplaces, but this, this is the bigger picture. So when we're, we're kind of talking about employee standards, it's a really great opportunity, as I say, to see the other side of the coin um, with how schools are self-evaluating and how you as employers can self-evaluate too. So we have got um, a really IT savvy um, super guest speaker today. Um, our lovely Jill is going to be talking us through um, yeah, yeah, talking us through our, our employer standards and the latest report. Um, over to you, Jill. Thank you. And good morning. Yeah. And this was just so, um, so timely this week that um, the annual report, actually, I think, I think it came out maybe Friday or it was Monday um, of, of this week. So I just thought it was really a good opportune moment this morning to kind of talk through. And I've just spent kind of 30 minutes this morning actually on a briefing from Careers and Enterprise Company. So I'm just going to this morning just run through the actual exec summary, which I think Gemma's going to put up on the screen for us. There is a full report that sits behind it as well that's got a lot, a lot of stats and different things in it, which I think over the coming months we will start to use. But I just thought this morning that we'd actually run through the exec summary and just I'm just going to highlight a few key points to you and then we'll share it out um, so I suppose the first thing is is on the top there it, it talks you around what what the actual annual report is um, and it is analysis of all the careers education that's going on um, across the country across our schools across our colleges um, and what it means um, not only for students but for you as employers and um, parents and, and generally everybody who's actually engaged in that so 
to give you some idea as well on this, when we're talking about the whole of this report, there's a lot of data and there's a lot of insight. Um, and that for me is that is the most positive aspect now of where we've come from and where, where we are now in terms of being able to really have that uh, really insightful data that actually sits behind a lot of these reports now for us. So in terms of when you actually look at the main report, it'll give you some of the stats, but there's four and a half thousand schools and colleges that have now input into this. I think we've got over a hundred thousand students now using future skills questionnaire which is the student survey that we are um, I think we've got about 3,000 students currently within Liverpool City region doing the future skills questionnaire for us at key key points uh, in their um, in their careers education and that really is helping to shape the schools um, overall careers plan careers strategy uh, and also kind of telling us as well what's actually what's actually hitting the mark with young people um, we've got 340 employers that have fed into this and we've got about 1100 business volunteers so that kind of encompasses absolutely everybody that's kind of supporting us um, so just going through the at a glance there and I know you won't be might not be able to read it greatly but just to run through those key things and just to pick these out for you really um, if you look at where the benchmarks were initially 2.1 when we initially started out and we were one of the first hubs in 2018 and um, we're now averaging 5.5 as a region we're actually averaging 5.9 currently so we're slightly ahead of national curve which we normally are and we're, we're on target to hit six benchmarks for the end of this academic year and um, point two then talks around young people about having more touch points with employers the whole point of our employer network the great work that you're all doing in terms of supporting us but now what we're saying is is 96% of young people in secondary school are having at least one employer encounter and there's a lot of our schools in Liverpool City region that are having a lot more than one employer um, and actually and it's about the quality as well of those encounters as well so again when we talk about the master classes that we do through the employer network it's all around that that I suppose that education of us all really how we can actually do better quality better quality interactions uh, with our young people and um, the third point then talks around that young people are twice as likely to report more awareness of apprenticeships so again you know we've talked a lot about apprenticeship and technical education and that's a real focus as we move forward as well the more awareness that we've got that our young people have got of those different route ways um, into jobs into future um, skills um, the more that we can do on that and then the fourth one then talks around around our benchmarks are driving positive outcomes for young people. So it is around NEAT, so not in employment, education or training. And you'll see on there that we're actually reducing the likelihood of our young people becoming NEAT. So um, there's a massive piece of work around how we're looking at our risk of NEATs. Um, and actually that links into some work that we're currently starting now in primary. Um, because these young people don't, just don't suddenly turn up at year 10 and 11 and don't know what they want to do and where they want to go. And, um, you know, we, we, we're kind of tracking these students through through the whole of their, sc their, their school life. So, again, we've got a lot of work, but definitely the work that we are doing and the impact of the quality of the bench the benchmarks and the achievement is actually now being seen through through some of the data and then the final one which is mostly one of the most important to you guys is is that around employers are definitely seeing benefits from actually engaging and again so this is about your talent pipeline about upskilling um, and enabling your staff as well to see the benefits um, looking at your diversity of your workforce and maybe even around recruitment costs as well but it's all kind of um, linking into the system um, so moving on to the next part um, there's three key insights that you'll that you'll see on the second part of the exec summary um, and it kind of talks about where we currently are and where we're moving to in terms of that next piece um, so in terms of the first one which talks around young people and again within the report there's more actual specific steps stats that they kind of talk through um, but this is around really for me on young people is around every single Gatsby benchmark matters so every single one of the eight benchmarks um, is around kind of driving what we're actually focusing on for our young people and ensuring that becoming career ready but the next stage of that is, is the work that we've already started is, is how we do more engagement with teachers and we bring our parents and carers along on that on that as well and about the quality and it's about a broad broadening everybody's um, I suppose education around career skills and, and what what we've got of job opportunities that's coming through Liverpool City region and through our growth sectors. The second one then moves on to about business and the economy. So again, it's about how we're actually demonstrating now 
um, how we're improving um, employment outcomes for young people. Um, and then what, what we're kind of moving to next is around the potential to kind of target more impact really in terms of what we're doing. So again, linking back to, to our network, when you look at the masterclasses, some of the masterclasses we're putting on, it's around that understanding what do we mean by and um, how can we deliver much more quality in terms of the actual um, the focus that we've got on those interactions with our young people. Um, and then thirdly, it, the closing the gap. So again, we, we know that there's a lot of our young people that are facing significant barriers and some of those are quite complex. So when we talk about disadvantage, um, we are really truly focusing um, where we need to. And again, that next piece really is around. Yeah, it is about it, it is about um, equity um, and ensuring that where we can focus and where we have got opportunity that we focus on those that need the most support as well and, and that's kind of driving through a lot of, a lot of the work that we're doing um, so just on this ne next page then it, it picks up some of the key areas that are within the report but just there in the middle part the under the current model positively benefits businesses and the economy I think that for me is really key there where you look at the highest quality of provision is actually is reducing or is likely to reduce our risk of needs by about eight percent in with, with with our students um and 83 percent of employers are saying that their their, their engagement with education is helping them to develop their talent pipelines um, so I think that's quite key um, and then the next one down there as well. Again, if we start looking at some of the gender stereotypes and, and some of that work that we're doing, some of that bias that we've got across some of our key industries. And I know that within the full report, it talks around engineering and getting girls into engineering. Um, you know, some of this data now is really showing us some, some of that kind of the steps forward that we're actually doing. And again, that's within the work that, that, you, that you're all supporting with. Um, and then just there at the bottom, just to highlight the one there that for me, um, the gap between students on receipt of free school meals remains consistent across year groups year groups and what they mean by that around um two two and a half points lower so what we're kind of saying is if you if you take students on free school meals they're starting two and a half points further back than 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 their their peers so that's why obviously that's why we need to provide more support and a lot of di additional activities to ensure that we can make sure that that, that they've got those opportunities and that they, they can see the value in terms of the work that we're, we're, we're providing with, sh providing support with. Um, and then the final page of the exec report just goes through the five areas, which I'm not really going to cover. But again, this talks around the next steps around. So we're talking about quality. We're talking around outreach to intake. Um, and, and that one's really around, obviously, um, focusing focusing our young people in terms of getting them into job opportunities getting them onto the right pathways the right destinations into college the right courses um, into he if that's the route they want to take um and obviously as well i think there's a there's a piece there around us with a lot of businesses it's certainly our smaller smes how do we um, support our smaller smes to be able to do some of this work and that's really where the employer standards come in we will kind of say these are some some initiatives what are you doing what are you not doing and actually this might be you can start to do maybe one of those areas to start to obviously develop that through 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 the, the businesses as well um interest to uptake obviously talks around tackling the barriers again around young people's progression um and and it mentions in there as well around some of those key sectors so net zero life sciences digital 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 across all all industry sectors but you can see there where this kind of lens lends into our growth sectors for for Liverpool city region as well um the fourth one's around margins to mainstream so again this is more around quality um, and around us actually embedding and looking to do that support with teachers and parents um, because we need to bring them along with us and we need to kind of um, provide that education so that it can be delivered more through curriculum in school that parents and carers um, have an opportunity to maybe do some of our sessions so they understand what's coming what's the new opportunities um, within our region and then finally um, which there's a lot of work going on in the background around how do we define when we talk about risk of of neat indicators for our young people. Um, what are those disadvantaged groups? Um, and for me, really locally as well, what does that mean for Liverpool City region? Um, and how can we try and really 
um, tackle disadvantage when it's not just a generic word that we're using, but we're actually specifically looking at some at some key areas. Um, so that's really just a very quick whistle stop tour of the exec summary, the full report. Um, and I know I'm going to get some additional slides from this morning's briefing. It'll pull some of those key slides that are within the full report that give you some of the data analysis um, and maybe at some future sessions we'll start to maybe pick up some of them because some of them are interesting when we start to look at our year groups our year sevens what they tell us and then what they're telling us at year 11 and also there's a really interesting slide in there around gender and and how the data that we get from young people how girls report against how boys report as well so i think you might find there's some really interesting insight and i think at, like i said at some future sessions we'll maybe pick a couple of those because i think it'd be really interesting to have a really good dis discussion around as well and some of the key sectors as well i think which is when we're talking about our gender gender stereotypes thanks michelle very quick quick run through hot off the press this morning Uh, yeah, I, I, th I think it's fascinating and, and I think the whole gender issue as well, um, bringing in International Women's Day to, to tomorrow, there's there's a lot of stuff, um, there's there's a lot of stuff floating out, out about there. I, I've noticed a lot on LinkedIn recently, um, obviously looking at, at the, the kind of gender skills um, gap and, and to have some up-to-date information um from from the CEC I think um as employers is 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 really powerful uh, one of the things that you mentioned there as well um was that idea of um you know working with schools and colleges being um a talent pipeline um so the investment is is, is not um I get a little I get a little bit angry I must admit when people say oh you work with 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 young people that's nice isn't it and I, I'm like no it's not nice it's you know we're building the economy here and um, the work that we're doing is absolutely essential um to our skills talent pipeline for, for our, our our areas economy um it's big stuff it's big stuff um okay as I say we're just um a nice little group um maybe let's take them slides off um and let's see um what everybody thinks about um what Jill's just said I'm, I'm just gonna put you on the spot and let's have an open discussion does that does that reflect what's happening in your organizations as I say I know we've only got um a few people around the table today um if not me and Jill will talk about this till the to let absolute cows come home um because it, it is it is absolutely key i'll open the floor okay i'm not going to sit in silence it's not a problem um if no if nobody wants to chat today that's fine if you want to pop in the chat if you've got any comments about how um the um that report as as maybe maybe gone yeah i totally agree with that or or no that's not that's not what's happening in my experience um please pop it in the chat michelle, okay. michelle. yes jill yes. sorry i was just going to say that um obviously once everybody opens the report and i know we won't bring it up now but on page 24 of the report there's some really great industry interests and they've okay. actually broken it down by region um, so you can actually look at your specific um, uh, industry. So if I take one that's in front of me now, manufacturing, it kind of tells us that that what, where our, what, what our students are focusing on, what they're in, in, interested in. Um, but it actually looks across the whole of a uh, uh, whole of the country as well. So it's it's quite interesting. And I think this is where some of this data will be really insightful in terms of some of the other work that's going on, like the local skills improvement plan, long term skills plan and things like that. But there's some really useful um, information in it. Um, and I suppose one thing that I didn't say before is, is that this isn't the, it is the CEC's annual report, but it's all of our work. It's it's all of the contribution that, that all of our employers are making to support our young people. It's all of the work that, you know, all the organisations are, are supporting. Um, so it's not just about the hub and it's not about CEC. So it's, it's, a, it's a collective of all the hard work that everybody's putting in. So, yeah, just a big thank you, really. And I'm quite excited if you can't tell to really get into some of this and and it will really really help us as I think as we move forward
it's really interesting. Gemma's just popped up the 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 comparison from the from the different um yeah the different areas. Yeah. yeah, it'd be nice to do some digging into digging into that surface data, won't it, for for our different sectors. Um, one of the things that that we'll be um we'll be doing pretty soon as well. Um, obviously we've we've spoken in the past about how important uh, parental engagement is, um, and we will be looking at doing um some parent sessions based on the growth sectors in the Liverpool City region. Um, so again, um, we'll we'll probably reflect back on on this information as well. Um, okay, so. The second half of the session, what we we're going to look at is um, the brand new employer standards. Um, I must admit, um, a couple of weeks ago, as an organisation, um, I it, it, we decided to go through it um, just to see where where we we are, and it is a fascinating tool. Um, it, it it is quite. If you fill it in honestly, <laughs> it, it is it is something that you can be quite reflective on. Um, and Jill's going to just talk through um, what the the standards are, um, how you can get them, how you can get the report. Um, yeah, I'd just say highly recommended. Um, yeah, Jill. Thanks, Michelle. Um, and I know we've covered these um, both at the uh, annual conference for anybody that attended that, but also I think we've covered them as, as well in January. Um, and interesting, actually, Liverpool City Region employers were doing really, really well in terms of, 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 of you um, actually completing it. Um, and I think what's interesting for me now is, is that through the employer standards, the data that that's providing, to you as an individual employer for you to look locally regionally nationally about the work that you're doing but it's also it's the information the insight that it's giving us along with the likes of the future skills questionnaire that young people are filling in you can see where all this really um good data is actually um enabling us to to produce the likes of the annual report that we're now getting to and i just think that you know that the, the more we can continue to kind of you know get people to engage and get people to complete these then then obviously the better even better that the data will be but I'm just going to very quickly run through this today um, so again this is all around us as better quality of uh, careers provision um, and obviously better outcomes for young people and and as it says on there that that a young person who has four or more encounters with an employer is 86 percent less likely to be unemployed so that neat figure um, is obviously reducing um, and again they can also earn more as well so looking at how they're actually progressing um, what their outlook is maybe what their aspiration is as well because that's the key in terms of the work that that you as employers are, are doing um, and, and it isn't just about the work that you do with young people but it's about what it, what it actually means for you as an employer um, around how you're doing your early years recruitment I talked before about recruitment costs about how you, you're looking at your diversity of your work, workforce um, and the skills gaps that you've got. And potentially, I think one of the things on there that's maybe missing as well is, is around is about the future, the future of the industry that you're currently in, um, you know, and how we need to recruit forward in terms of new skills, new technologies that are coming as well. So moving on, Gemma. Yeah, so um, this just really just kind of explains really um, what, what the employer standards are all about. So it, it's a practical tool. It kind of gives us um, a template um, for businesses to use and look at what you know what your need is. Um, it, it kind of enables you to look at how you can maybe develop if you're not already doing it, but then actually improve um, how you are kind of supporting um, young people as well. And then on the next slide, then it just kind of talks around the approach that um, that CEC took uh, initially to kind of set up the employer standards and the 100 plus organisations that were initially um, piloted on it. And a lot of those were our cornerstone employers. And I know our cornerstone employers within the Liverpool City region kind of fed into that initial pilot for us. And then moving on to the next slide, then it kind of just is just a summary, really, of what, what it is. So it is a framework. It's a free tool. It does only take 25 minutes to complete it. And like Michelle said, I actually sat with her last week and we actually went through it. It is about raising quality of whether you've not done any work at all or whether you're actually already doing it. And what does that look like? Um, it's a great way to highlight best practice. And there's, there's nine focus areas um, within the employer standards, which kind of the survey is set against. And those nine are here. 
there's three areas. So you've got inspiring young people, you've got preparing young people to be career ready, and then you've got collaboration for success. And under each of those um, three areas, you've then got the different the different um, kind of subsections. So around meaningful opportunities, being inclusive and evaluate and improve under young people to like to find their best next steps under career ready. We're looking at about talking about skills. We're looking at ab about application processes um, and around how you're actually raising awareness about your pathways into, into your into your workplace and then the final one then is around what's your longer term planning who you're actually currently partnering with um, and the value of that engagement that you're currently doing and then the next couple of slides are just what the employer portal looks like so you'll need to log in um, into the portal um, and run through the actual um, survey um, and then on the next slide then it kind of shows you the self-assessment questions so it'll ask you a question and it'll ask you to obviously click the usual boxes um, and there are quite a few of them but I think it's really worthwhile whether it's yourself um, or whether it's somebody within your organisation or a couple of you that sit around and actually do that and then at the end of that, then you then go on to my results, which then gives you kind of um, a summary of what your results tell you. So where are you? Um, are you still in that aspiring box where you, you're just kind of starting off? Um, are you kind of middle of the road? Are you doing some things? And, and then, you know, are you excelling? Because, you know, you'd hope to think that if from an employee perspective, if you've been doing some of this work for quite a while, you might be in different areas within the report. You might all be at the top. You might be doing great across all areas, but you've most surely got some variation across that report. And then what the report then does is it allows you to compare. So it actually breaks it down around what your results are. Um, and then you've actually got the opportunity then to look at um, locally people within your industry sector. So how are they? How are they reporting? It's obviously all anonymized, but it gives you an idea of, uh, of uh, are, you ex are you kind of excelling in terms of your industry? Do you think you could be doing more if, if other people possibly are doing more? But you can also look regionally and nationally as well. And I think it gives us a really good indicator. Um, and again, it feeds through some of that industry and sector knowledge that, that obviously comes through the, the report that we did earlier. And then finally, then just the last slide really is that once you've actually done the report, you can then access resources that are within the employer standards and there's lots of different things that are in there and um, I'm just actually waiting for a breakdown of a lot of the detail that's in there so maybe we can pick some key things that that we think might be really useful quick quick wins um, but I know there's a lot of resources to kind of help you as employees if you want to improve but there might be some elements of that that we might well pick out and and, and, and bring to the master classes within within the employer network um, and the final slide then just kind of says about take the take the self-assessment um, use the resources, obviously talk to the hub um, and you kind of, I suppose, just keep going around the wheel, really. Um, so hopefully if you've if you've not completed the employer standards, it would be really great if you as an organisation, um, you actually have a look at it. And, and kind of, you know, assess yourselves. Um, and off the back of that, then if you think there's areas where you want to provide additional support or you're unsure, then obviously that's where, yeah, coming through to us. Um, and there might be some re key reflections that um, as the employer, the employer network, we can actually start to pick up and run with um, over the next few months and, and obviously into the next academic year as well. That's it, Michelle. Happy to take any questions on it. Anybody's got any queries? Um, I, I like that that you've you just keep going around the wheel. Um, that's 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 going to be an in joke now, isn't it? Um, we're, we're just going to um keep going get around the wheel. Um, one other thing I found fascinating as well. Um, the wheel. Um, was the um, I'm on Mac Michael McIntyre, Anna. <laughs> you are. Um, it, it was that. Um, actually, you do you 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 get different questions, different advice depending on the size of business you are as well. Um, yeah. which is quite good because um, I must admit, from a an SME point of view, um, I, I, I don't want to be getting advice like I'm a, a multinational. <laughs> Operation. Um, I, I thought it was nice that that it was that it was tailored. Um, I think we'll probably um, circle back to this. Um, see what I did this there. Um, maybe in, in a few months, just to 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 kind of we'll send out the link to make sure um, everybody knows where where to to look for it. Um, and maybe we'll just have um, uh, 
some group chats around uh, around your experiences with it yeah um that, that i think we've got a top good. tip sheet as well Michelle, yeah so i'll make sure that you've got yeah. everything that yeah. will be the, worthwhile yeah. uh, sending out as well yeah we will we'll we'll do that um we'll we'll make sure everybody's got that um one of the things that we have um we've been asked to do um by by some employees as well was just to to highlight um some opportunities that are happening with schools and colleges right now um our lovely charlotte um manages the given hour um campaign um and i do I, I, yeah um it's not always an hour i'm just gonna put that out there sometimes it's an hour um sometimes it's longer um but it, this is like ready-made opportunities our schools are asking for um right now um to get involved in um and i just sort of said highlight um a, a couple of them um there's also kind of like loads of flexibility with a lot of schools you know they, they're saying um so this is a nice one the first one um you know dates will suit the business so whenever you can you can you can fit it in range of ac academic uh, a range of events across the academic year uh, careers fairs assemblies um just you know happy to make links with all employers really wide open request um Thursday mornings at Dixon's uh, Broad Green Academy and um, they're looking at uh, employee engagements and um, so th every Thursday morning they're, they're looking for workshops presentations stuff like that uh, Mayfield again ongoing sessions throughout the year um, and and the same same for Wirral um, nice open um, requests um, we've had so much support um, from from our employees so far um it, it has been um has been lovely um show me age now but um charlotte's turning in, into the silla black of uh, given our matchmaking um our employers um with um with our school requests um if you're not signed up um you should be you need to be um get involved with given our um really good um good opportunity to get uh, engaged with our schools and colleges. Um, I am going to announce um, in a minute that 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 lovely phrase that you get, oh, we've finished early, um, which is which is fab. We can all grab a grab an early lunch. Um, but I just wanted to highlight our next masterclass is on the 25th of April at 11 o'clock. Um, that's going to be we're going to be looking at diversity um, and inclusion um and our next quarterly meeting um is on the 15th of may um invites will be sent round um as always we will follow up um with all the links and as as jill said top tips and stuff um to everybody um yeah jill, I, jill jill's just had the phone call um hot off the press secretary of state is in our region visiting a school um that's exciting finding out about the work that we're that we're doing well yeah a bit of notice would be nice but yeah <laughs> yeah 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 you get you get a quick phone call and yeah yeah amazing but could, could be on the news I don't know we'll see amazing we'll see. um fab thanks so much um for coming along to this session today um hope um hope that give you some some further information on what's going on in our region and um the, the wider bigger picture um, Charlotte's popped up the the sign up for given hour as well um, in the chat, um, and we're going to stay on for another five minutes. If anybody's got any questions, um, but any um, yeah any questions or any suggestions, pop over to us and we will sort that out. Um, have a great afternoon, everybody. <laughs>